Heavenly Father God, we humbly come to you tonight, God. Lord God, you know our hearts and you know our needs, God, and the word says that you supply our needs, God. So God, we just lift our needs up to you, Father God, each and every one, God. Be with those who could be there here tonight and be with those who can't be here tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. But it's verse 14. Heavenly Father, help me tonight bring forth what I believe you call me to do. You show me what we need want to talk about this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Do I have somebody that can explain or tell me what that means? It's very, very important, Sister Ann. Well, like an unbeliever and a believer, uh, in any relationship, whether it's a marriage or a friendship, there's going to be a big difference because of the way you believe. We're going to want to live one way, and they're going to want to live another, and so there will not be unity because of the the differences. That's very important. Now, we need to love the world, but, I mean, as far as having, let's say, a best, best friend that, you know, I mean, you need Christians. We need Christians because they believe in God like we believe in God. And the world doesn't always look at things like we look at it. But they don't. So uh, uh, God knows what he's talking about when he says that. You know, don't be any, like if you get married, uh, if you marry a non-believer, they're going to want to go do one thing. You're not going to want to do it. That's no good. I believe you gave a pretty good explanation yes, uh, of not being the same. Not the same. Oh. It, it's it's just not the same. Not the same. Even as a best friend is going to go want to go off to uh, a party that you're not going to want to participate in, or you shouldn't participate in, okay. or you go in order to peace. Well, that's where the devil gets you. And that's a difference between being separate and separating yourself from the world. You got to be careful of having even a best friend yes. in that situation. I'm glad you brought that up. Just a minute. And then say, just a say minute, it. Yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Even a best friend would be like a marriage. Right. It gets harder because you're you're closer. Some friends is closer than a brother. Right. So you've got to be careful about that. I'm not saying we're not to have friends. No. But if you have a best friend, needs to be someone that believes as you believe, so you're not all the time being pulled to the world. Right. The more you're pulled to the world and you forget and you start slipping about your prayers, you start slipping about your Bible study, you start missing church ever so often. Next thing you know, you're missing more and more. You're going less and less because you're off doing something. It may not be wrong. Maybe they invited you on a boat trip and a picnic. There's nothing wrong with it. Of the act. But when you're doing it is the difference. That would be like a pastor every other week I'm going fishing yeah, yeah. Right? right what would happen if I come and put a, 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 a thing on the door about every two or three weeks just Scott and I's going on we're going to the ocean the next week oh we're going on a boat trip oh we're just we were just tired that's the best answer everybody's got I'm tired we've got to be separate from people so we need to stay tuned, okay? Yes, Sister Ann. Well, what I'm trying to say, say if you have a, a friend that's a non-believer and you're trying to fit in with them and do some things with them, but then they'll change on you. So see, you can't follow man, because they'll change on you. And then there you're stuck in a situation you don't even want to be in, 
and you're doing it to please them, and the, but the, the, then they don't want to do it either. So there you are. You're the one that's unhappy because you're following them. <laughs> that happens. You got you got to be careful. Yes. About you. being separate it, with um, with unbelievers. Uh, the, the commentary in here says there are two. There are two friendships mm -hmm. in the world, and only two. All men belong either to one or the other. We understand that, right? right. We either follow the world. That's our friend. Or we follow Christ. We follow Jesus. And that's who we follow. Is him. And that is important. Not to separate yourselves. So we're talking about it here. And all men believe either in one or the other. And no one can belong to both. Or claim to be a Christian. We understand that. I can't be part of the, of the world and, and, and be a Christian. I just can't. Sister Ann, I thought was fixing to go somewhere here, but she did in a way. That friend flips on you, or that party you got invited to that was cake and ice cream yeah. for your nephew turns into a beer bash. Do you belong there? Then you better exit. Family or no family. You understand what I'm saying? I have children that like to drink. And the party gets going. Sister Scott and I get going. We politely, we don't rudely, and it's going to get into that down here. We don't rudely take ourselves out. But we take ourselves out politely, lovingly, and they understand. Okay, you sure you gotta go? Yeah, we need to go. Thank you. Thank you for the dinner. Thank you for the cake, whatever. We gotta go. The part we hate is leaving our grandkids there. And they still get part of it, or all of it. And they think it's okay. Or they think the pool parties are okay. Topless, or whatever way. And <coughs> or nude these days. If you're on Mike's the kids, the side of my kids, that's where they're at. You gotta be careful. So that's why we leave. There won't be part of any of it. None of any of it. Pastor so was be talking careful. about like if, if you said, oh, you were going fish or, or not coming, that would give us more liberty to say, okay, we're going to go do stuff. See, we follow, we don't follow you, but the example, you know, you're an example for us. And if you say, well, put a sign on the door, <laughs> well, then the, the congregation, well, we're going to go do something, too. That's all human nature. But the thing was, my purpose of that was, I was putting it on there because the congregation's already doing it. <laughs> That's why I said it. Yeah. We okay. One is with the world, and one is with the Lord. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? None. And what communion has light with darkness? None. You cannot see light of Christ in the dark. You can only see it when you're with Him and you can see the light. Verse 15. And what, Conrad, has Christ with Baal? The presence of another name for Satan. Satan has many, many names. Many names throughout the Bible, but many names throughout the world. So be careful to what you're following and make sure you're watching to what name is being spoken 
that the people that you are with are following. Because many would tell you in a different way. In a different way. I heard one the other day. I didn't know, but it, when I checked it out, it was Satan. And I forget the name now. I thought I would forget it. But we do have to be careful and listen. We have to be careful in listening. God says we need to be listening all the time. Right? Need to be in tune. Those who make a profession of salvation should resolve to separate themselves from the world. Resolve is just another way of saying, I'm not going to do that. Strongly, I'm not going to do it. I resolve to the fact I am not following the world, but I'm following Jesus. However, it is separation and not isolation. So we already kind of hit on that isolation part. We don't want to isolate the world because the world's who we want to reach. And if we isolate the world, then how are we going to reach them? That's right. If we act like we're better than them, we're isolating them. The example I did a minute ago about leaving and not leaving to make them feel like you know, they're trash or they did something wrong. You want to leave the world with an open door. You want to be able to come back to them at a point in time that Christ opens a door for you and you walk through it. Meaning, by walking through it, that you are going to have something to teach them and maybe give them about Christ that they ask some questions. Or they might even just say, and don't be blown away if it happens. Who is this man you talk about? Who is this Jesus that you talk about? How is it that you're so happy? I want to be that. I'd like to know him. And when that happens, you must be prepared to be able to answer the questions and step up and lead them to Christ. Now, I mentioned something to someone today. I don't want to feel like I'm shoving something down someone's throat. I need that door to be open. I need to step through it and as far as I can until I, I, I'm, I'm getting pulled back. I'm getting the door is closing. I'm better to leave it while it's still a little open than keep pushing. Then it closes to where I can't reopen it. We understand that? You know. It's always better to do that. So we're not separating the world from us in the sense that we need to be able to to go back and talk to them because we still have a friendship with that person even though we don't agree Amen. we still have that friendship to to uh, be able to be the one or at least set it up for somebody to be able to talk to them about Jesus it's important The presence to another name for Satan, or what part has he who believers believes with an infidel? Anybody know what an infidel is? You mean you mean the explanation for an infidel? Unbeliever. Unbeliever. Okay. A little bit more. Someone who doesn't want to believe. believe. Pardon? Someone who doesn't want to believe. Someone that who rejects Christ over and over and doesn't want to believe is right, is a sinner, and can be 
very negative person to, to what Jesus was. But an infidel flat does not believe in any part of or thereof. So those who make a profession, and also they do this, so you need to listen to this. Those who make a profession of salvation should resolve to separate themselves from the world. However, it is separation and not isolation. In what agreement has the temple of God with idols? What are we talking about there? We're the temple. Okay. And we're to separate the temple from idols. What happened with the uh, with Israel when they were going across the desert? They were God's people. They were chosen. They were following him. But they also got mad while Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments. But Moses got mad too. He had to make an apology. And he had to ask God for forgiveness. And then when he be, went back to the mount to get them, they made what? Golden calf. They had. A golden calf. They made an idol to follow. We can make idols, though, I want to tell you, out of chewing gum wrapper. Yeah. That could be your idol. You can make that idol out of anything that you want. Yes, I'll sir. say one for you. And this is a tough one for all of us. And you might not agree with me. But that TV <laughs> in your living room or family room becomes your idol. Because you can't pull yourself away from it. Good or bad, watch it. Because there comes a time that you need to turn that off and spend time with God. And you can't do it with it on. Now I stepped on some toes there. <laughs> but I stepped on mine. I have to remind myself. At night time, I'll watch something I'm up late, but I'll turn that thing off at least for a half an hour, usually, before I go to bed. And I'll spend that time with him. Maybe I watched something that wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. But I need to cleanse myself. I want to have a peaceful, restful night. I need to pray. I need to spend time with Him. And the way I do that is I turn it off. So, be careful what we are serving. You know, other people find that boat every Sunday. Christian people. I, I, I've been in churches. My dad's church for one. certain fish and seas had come along, we knew he wasn't going to be in church. And he was a deacon. So my dad had to take care of that and clip some wings. It either, you're not going to be gone every Sunday. Or you made a choice for God and you're going to serve him as what you chose to do as a deacon. Well, that first year he went ahead and chose. I want to tell you what happened. He got out one Sunday. Got in trouble in his little boat. And that boat went under. The waves helped wash him back up to a rock that he hung on. So someone came along to get him. 
that Sunday he happened to decide to go by himself rather than his friend and about lost his life. I'm not saying because he chose to be to do that, but I am saying the fact you make decisions, you're going to pay the consequences. Yeah. He turned out to be one of his good friends. And three or four years later, he got back to be a deacon. But he had to pay the price. He came in and testified how the Lord saved him. He says, if you thought I was already saved, I was, but he re-saved me. That's important, church. Where are we at there? Where are we at with our separation? What are we doing that separates us from him that shouldn't be separating us? No matter what it is, we all have something. We all have something. So we need to be careful about the idols. For you are the temple of the living God. Sister uh, already talked about that. Brenda. Tell me about that, Sister Brenda. What, what is the temple of God? We are. We're the temple. He lives, he dwells within us. Okay. So we're his temple. Okay. If, you, if, you're, if you're saved, then he comes to live with you. And it's not the temple that it used to be back in the Old Testament where they, it was like a tent or something back then. That was their temple where they went in where God, where God was. Now, because of the blood of Jesus, we're the temple now. Because we've separated ourselves from the world. Uh -huh. oh, yes, we've accepted yeah. Christ as our Savior. Uh -huh. And we have said, we've asked Him to forgive us of our sins. And now that makes us the temple of God. You stop and think about that. Why would it want to make you be anything else but to be part of God's family? By just simply saying yes. That's what the most important yes you've ever said in your life. Beyond any other yes is saying yes to Jesus. Saying yes to him. Speaking of believers, as God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's what Sister Brenda was saying in a nutshell. And they will be my people. The believers is the sanctuary in the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit, all made possible by what Jesus Christ did upon the cross. There would be no reason for us to do say we're a Christian if there was never a cross. There was a cross for Jesus to bear. And thank God that He's the one that bore it. Because I don't believe any of us could do that. That we could have gone through what he went through for us to be the temple. To be part of him. I will dwell in them. It means I will be in here. I will live inside of through the Holy Spirit, I will live with you. You are that important to me. And I will walk with them. As I've preached many times and I talk about, as you know, he's the one that's holding my hand. He's the one helping me through whatever I am going through. He is the one to help me cross that river or get over that mountain or get around that curve or whatever it is 
and still stay on the path of righteousness and following him. He's going to help keep me safe. And I will be their God. I will be their go-to person. We, we like to think of a go-to person. You need something? Go to Jesus. You need some help? Go to Jesus. You, you, you can't pay the bills this month? Go to Jesus. You don't have food for the table? Go to Jesus. He is everywhere. He has every need for you that you have need of. Go to Him. He will feed you manna from heaven. He will feed your soul. And He will feed you naturally if that's what you need. Do you actually realize that everything we have comes from God? Everything. I looked at Brother Jess and he told me Sunday, no, Pastor, I'm doing better. Just a few weeks ago he said, I can't make it. I said, but just continue. Let God help you. And with a smile on his face, he says, I'm doing better. You know what? No matter what it is, no matter how much it hurts, God will be there all the way until the end. The main, the best thing I love about God is He never leaves me. He never gives up. Yes, Sister Anna. He's everything that we need. Everything. Father, mother, sister, brother, children, just anything we need, God's there. Mm -hmm. He's my everything. As that song says, He is all I need. He is my everything. He is my all. Christ is our all, church. When we feel like we've gone as far as we can go, He's still there. He didn't leave. And you know what he's saying? Let me help you. Let me help you. I'll help you with this. Give it to me. That's the hardest thing we have doing in this world is giving it to him sometimes. Amen? That's right. Uh, lost for a man. The believer is the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit and all made possible by the cross. We understand that how Christ speaks to us on earth. Do we remember that he says, I leave you, but I'll never forsake you. I will leave you with a comforter the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does everything. You need to understand, through the Holy Spirit, He speaks to us. He is the one that is our guide. He's our comforter. He's everything that we need. That's how He speaks to our spirit. And we understand that our spirit's alive, right? Because when we die, if we if we've been with Christ on earth, our spirit goes to heaven. Our body, our body remains here because later we're going to be called up with a new body yeah. and it will get meet up with our spirit and they too 
will come together and we'll have a new body in Christ. That's the way I understand it. I know some teach it a little different, but that's that's what I believe. And uh, it is important. The Holy Spirit is important to you. So you need to cry out for that Holy Spirit. You need to ask to be able to speak in tongues. In both fashions, as a prayer or as the Holy Spirit would give you utterance to speak out in a message or interpretations. And that's a special gift, and Sister Brenda's going to get into that. But that's important. That's why the Holy Spirit, and she's going to get into the Spirit and stuff. So I'll leave that more for her. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. How much more do we need to be told than saith the Lord? We like to think we're authority sometimes. <laughs> I've got a five-year-old that tells me I'm not the authority. <laughs> you have one of those, Sister Brenda? <laughs> we need to recognize that our authority comes from above. It doesn't come from men. Yes, there's things on earth, like the first time it, it was a pandemic came around. I followed the law of the land. I did what was asked. We stayed home. Yeah. I know Brenda and Harvey stayed home. Yeah. We allowed no visitors. Right. We seen nobody, not even our kids, that are a mile and a half across town. Yeah. We, right. we followed the law of the land. We followed the president and our governor. This time, he's off his rocker. Yeah. You hear what I said? I will not follow you. I would not have somebody tell me I'm not singing in church. I would not have somebody tell me that I can't have church. I would not have somebody tell me I can only have ten. I will not tell, have somebody tell me how and what I'm going to preach. I will not have somebody tell me what I will do where it pertains Jesus Christ. I will follow what the Word of God says. I tried your way. It didn't work. Now you want to shut us down again. You're not shutting me down anymore. I'm going to continue because my rights under the Second Amendment says I can, but moreover than that, the rights in this Bible tells me I can have church. It says I can worship Him. I can teach and I can preach from this Bible. It's, I want us to be safe. I want us to be able to protect ourselves, but I am not going to shut down a church because I'm being told to. So, you can tell anybody that wants to come to church this is the church. They can come to church. They can have church. It is important. It is, what do they call it? Essential. Essential. There is nothing more essential than having church and having Jesus Christ. Nothing more essential. If you don't have God, it ain't going to make a difference what else you do. You need God to be in this world. That's, right. that's enough that's right. of that, but that's the truth. It's not really enough. I, I, I'm not going to quit. Separate yourself, saith the Lord. It says, as stated, the word of God, emphasis of teaching and separation from the world, but not to isolate and not touch the unclean things. you have any idea what this means? Somebody want to tell me what? Not touch the unclean things? Well, I'm going to get really down it's here. It's over and over and over. Don't be in the world. Don't touch that world. Don't go out into the world. Don't do it. It's just what it's saying here so many times. It's unclean. Okay. 
What if I happen to be at my son's house and having a gathering and somebody says, pass me that glass and that bottle of wine over there? That's not the unclean thing. Don't touch. Is it up the I world? shouldn't be there. Yeah. And I will exit soon. There's too many people. Some of the Christians believe it's okay to drink wine. See, that's the problem that comes in. I don't drink wine. I don't. I put it this way. If I have a, if there's a, say a glass of wine would be up to here, okay? And this glass. And I put one tenth in here. And I drink that one tenth. I, first of all, I've touched something that's unclean. The Bible says don't touch unclean things. They, yeah. What they use in the Bible is the wedding, you know, how he turned the water into wine. So that's where people get confused. Even some Christians, I don't mean if, they, if, if they would study that and know that, uh, that wedding at that, that point, that was not even fermented wine. No, right. right. That's true. I Prior heard. to, it's talking about it was unfermented. Right. Do you think Christ made fermented wine? No, he but they, do that. People say, but they all got drunk. Well, they got drunk on their own stuff. But let's go back to where I'm talking about here. I put 10% in here. I drink this. I now am 10% drunk. If it only takes five of those or three of those for you and you're drunk, well then ten, one tenth is, you're already one third on your way. But if it happens to take 10 of them for you to get there, you're one-tenth on your way. Oh, that didn't taste too bad. Give me, uh, give me another. That's the problem. You can't stop. You can't quit. You keep going, and you end up drunk. The devil will tempt you in any way that he can. And if he can get you to partake, and, and, and continue partaking, then he has you. He'll keep after you until you either you, you ask God to forgive you and help me not to do it again, show me, enlighten me, give me wisdom. Uh, he can do all those things. And I will receive you at the same time means if the person disobeys these injunctions of the Lord will not receive us. The Christian can walk clean in the world only by constantly and invincing faith. Say, Johnny, what is that? Evidencing faith. Evidencing faith in the cross of Christ which makes it possible for the Holy Spirit just as I spoke Sister Anna for the Holy Spirit to do His work within our lives. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important. That He can help us in those unclean walks and those unclean things, un evincing faith. You know, our faith has to be strong in this world to be able to be separate from the devil. The devil is very tricky. He has so many tricks up his sleeve he's like the the cardster you know that can do cards and things and make you and it's nothing but a, a trick but he can do it right in front of you or he can do it to you and he don't make you feel like you're a fool he actually makes you feel good he has a way of convincing you it's okay if we are Leaning up against that fence. He's going to grab you and pull you off. So that's why it's important that we set, as the word says, the straight and the narrow. That is tough. We, we can't do it all the time. But God says, if we will do our best, I will help you with the rest. You believe that? Yes. Yeah. 
I might not be able to do it on my own. But with you, Lord, and your help, I can. Because what you did on this cross down here, I will make it. I will make it. What you've already done, I will make it. I will get through it. Because your blood is enough. Amen? Amen. His blood is enough. We have to excuse me. We have to be careful what we read because even in health books, they sometimes they say a little wine's good for you, you know. And so we have to know what we really believe in with God, our own personal selves. We do, because you might read something. Oh, a little wine is good for you, you know, and maybe it really wouldn't hurt you. But then you start that, and then it's some doctors even prescribe. A glass of wine yes, for people yes, do. that have disorders in their stomach. Yes. It's soothing. Right. It takes care of it. It relaxes you. Right. Uh, others, he does it for a natural way in order to be able to put you to sleep. It's the fermentation that is good for the body. <clears throat> but you can get that fermentation from a lot of different things. You can eat per, uh, fermented vegetables. You can eat fermented, like sauerkraut. It's fermented. Yeah. It's good for your stomach. Yeah. And I love it. The Bible says that we are not to be, uh, be to be drunk because we are to be wise. We're to use wisdom. We need to keep our mind alert and keep yeah. it on him. When we take it off we become intoxicated in any way then we're not keeping our mind on him and we're not using wisdom at all so that's why he's warning us in here as Christians we need to come out and be separate we need to use wisdom we need to use um, our knowledge yes we need to use what the Word is, is teaching us to do. And if we're doing all those things, the Holy Spirit works within us to lead and guide us. And when He's leading and guiding you, you won't fall into these traps. Because Satan sets up traps for us every day. So we have to know we have to know what the Word says so that we can follow it. We can't if we don't follow what he's teaching in here, and we become drunk with wine. And he quotes it in the Bible: "Don't become drunk with wine." And he gives you a reason why he doesn't want you to. But if you don't read and study and know the word, you wouldn't know what it said. It's a raging person out of you. Well said. No, very, very, very true. Cut right to the chase, right down to it, what God's Word says. That's important. And, and as I always say, I've got one more verse to go here, is all I've got. The church, I tell you over and over and over, you must study. The Word actually says, you must study to show yourself approved. You don't study, you're not going to be approved. Because you don't understand or you don't know. How many How many knew exactly what Sister Scott just said already? Everything. Everybody knew everything. Huh? Okay. I agree with it. Yeah, I One agree no. With okay. Yeah, you know what? And that's okay. I, I don't, no one's going to feel bad for saying no. That's my point. We want to reach you. We want to teach you. We want people, those that may see this by video or the YouTube, we want you to understand what God's Word says and how important it is in our lives. And if you don't know it or don't understand it, 
You can't show yourself approved. Just to say that I'm a Christian is not going to make it. Maybe it will work this way and this way only. You got saved in the service. You get in your car and he calls you home. You didn't have the opportunity. Maybe you had it prior in your life. Some do, some don't. But you didn't have the opportunity in the 15 minutes time you left the church and got in the car to, to read and study, to show yourself approved, to do this or do that that the Bible says. But you did ask for forgiveness and he forgave you. And that's all it takes is to ask for forgiveness. That I have done wrong, Father, and I want to serve you. Would you please forgive me? I want to get to know you. It's a simple task, world, simple. And I will be a father unto you, but only under the conditions mentioned in the above scriptures. Now we have been studying one, two, three, four scriptures. And it says, I will be your father only under the conditions that you just studied. Now how important does that make what, what we just studied tonight? Very important, doesn't it? Maybe now I even know why God says, this is what I want you to teach on. I had no idea. We need to understand that we, I believe here talking to the world or wanting to be a Christian, as he was explaining here, we must be separate from the world. We cannot serve two gods. We can only serve one God. And he's the one. Not Baal, not Satan, not the devil, or any other, anything else that he calls himself. We must serve the one and the only that sacrificed his life on a cross and was beaten for no reason except to take it for us so we didn't have to he sacrificed his life that we could live and not have to sacrifice that we didn't have to go through what he went through he did it for each and every individual every man woman boy or girl that walks this earth or even is born as infants and lay uh, one minute old and I believe for those that are boarded as well. Those are lives. Those are human beings. And I'm against it. I'm against it. It says here, And you shall be my son and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. The last part of the commentary says, Lord Almighty suggests that we must never resort to the world, but rather drive, draw all nourishments from the Lord, who can provide all things which the world can never provide. If we didn't believe it before he can provide everything that we have need of and church I believe that with all my heart I know it to be true I've seen over and over and over many a times I remember my dad pastoring a church in Winton and we were still out in the country in a little country church that we ran about 80 to 100 in little country church <laughs> He moved it into town after a while, but in that church, when he first started, wasn't a lot, wasn't a lot of money, and he didn't have a job. His only job was that church. 
with 30 people or 40 people. And he, they believed that the tithes belonged to the pastor, period. Every tithe that came in. And then you took the offerings that paid for the rent, the building, utilities, and anything else. And that's where how things were done. And there was not enough. And we knew that Sunday we were going to sit down to one little can of spam between four of us, five of us, and a piece of bread apiece, and that was going to be lunch. And we sat down, down, and my dad began to pray, and we heard something at the door. A little bitty knock, but there were, when we opened it, it still makes me cry. 20-something bags of groceries had been set on a doorstep, just packed full of food. Somebody went and got this old, I don't remember, old van, I think. And he says, Pastor, would you come here? And he walked over. He said, I've been working on the Exchequer Dam out here for the last three and a half months. Haven't paid my tithes. And I want to give my tithes to you. Handed my dad about $5,000. Tell me God doesn't show up. He was about to lose his car. Three months behind, don't know why they hadn't already picked it up. We were behind on everything. God will show up. God has kept this church going with seven, eight people. I don't know how, but he did. I know I serve a God that whatever your needs are, I don't care. Whatever your needs are, God will take care of. I want you to remember tonight, but I'm sure tonight, uh, I hope tonight, that people get some insight that they didn't understand or they didn't know before. Brother Harvey, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that for your presence in this building today, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord, that you have gave us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the understanding to understand your word, Lord, so that we may lock your word in our hearts, Lord, so that we may use it on a day-to-day -day basis, Lord. That is what we need today, and that is what this world needs today, Lord, is more of your word being used every day, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you for this day, Lord. And keep your hand of protection on us, Lord. And bring us back the very next day that this building, these doors are open, Lord, so that we spend, may spend more time in worship and in learning more about you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you and lift your name on high, Lord. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone said amen. Amen. Good Bible study.